Is it an epic or epic failure? The Big Review. Movies, games, and TV in focus. Oh, 95. I think one of our most anticipated Netflix movies was Don't Look Up since the moment they announced it and the roster of actors and actresses that were going to be featured in it. And I remember a lot of people were thinking, why are you adding all these people? What is going on in this movie? Well, the premise is that Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence play a professor and a PhD candidate, respectively, who discover a comet that is hurtling towards Earth and will be basically creating a whole catastrophic event that will lead towards the extinction of the entirety of every single species in the entire planet within six months. And the entire movie chronicles the days and weeks and basically the the effort they put into trying to get everybody's attention and trying to tell them that we need to do something to save our lives. Now, the premise is the usual trope, but it was from a different perspective. It was from the perspective of the scientists themselves. Because usually what happens in those apocalyptic, um, you know, comet hurtling towards Earth movies such as Armageddon and whatnot, what happens is that the NASA or somebody from the U.S. Army finds out they got a bunch of ragtag blue-collar workers. They throw them together into a rocket ship and they send them off into space to battle this uh, comet or do something about it. But here it's like, what if they weren't that fast in responding and nobody wants to believe them? What actually happened? So I feel like it's a little bit more grounded in reality. Yeah. That perhaps that whole heroic sequence might not happen in real life. It, actually, if anything, the movie felt too real um, in the sense where it, uh, what what was transpiring in terms of you know all these special interest groups and the media and how just the general public would react mm. to something like this um, it, it's it's almost like I'm, I'm watching art imitate life mm -hmm. very very well and I I, for, I just I'm, when I was watching the movie I was just checking who's the director for this movie and it's Adam McKay who mm -hmm. directed the big short and I'm like of course this is the guy of he is the master of dark comedy mm -hmm. and he does such a phenomenal uh, phenomenal job with this film and the idea that there is a comet coming crashing uh, on earth it's it's a post it's a, an apocalyptic uh, scenario mm -hmm. you got six months and they they went out to the media and they're, they're telling people mm -hmm. about this apocalyptic event and the the way the media reacts to it's like oh he didn't do very well in the polls he didn't get in a lot of traffic so people don't really care and yeah. it's like oh my god it was is... uh they were turned into memes you know basically why it usually happens in the real world um the president honestly meryl streep fantastic love her <laughs> version of the president and of course, we cannot forget Jonah Hill. It's just amazing, amazing. As um, as a president, Janie Orleans and her son, Jason Orleans, just, just they, were, they were just comical. That's the thing. It was, like you said, a dark comedy, a take on real life events. And again, this is focused in America. So we need to look at it from that perspective. And that movie felt like a very American response to anything that of that catastrophic kind of a scale. And again, it's very grounded in reality, and I love that about it. And like honestly, I just enjoyed it so much. I cannot stress that enough, it's, especially the way yeah. the 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 footage was cut as well, the juxtaposition, the the way when they're freaking out, and then it goes back to the present, and then it goes back to the, a little bit to the future with them yelling maybe, and then go back and forth and back and forth. It also shows how the their emotions are probably jumbled up and up and down, and they're going crazy from the inside. Meanwhile, everybody else is kind of calmed down. And I love the fact that it was very, like I said, very realistic, and it had lots of elements that, you know, if you look at American news right now, you'd be like, yeah. That is exactly how it is. And then you watch the movie, you're like, yeah, that is exactly how they would respond. It's it's weird because uh, at the same time, you, you look at it and it really is a reflection of the absurdity of us as humans. Even in a point of an apocalyptic scenario, we are still so stubborn, politically inclined. We have special interests. We look out for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're greedy. And this movie... 
just it, it's 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 a commentary on all of it. It's insane mm-hmm. how much they were able to deliver in this in this film, mm-hmm. which makes it also very hilarious at yes, the same time. Yes, it was like a good a good version, a good mockery of American society. And we're going to continue talking about it. We're not done. We're going to be taking a short but very quick break right here on the afternoon cutout, and we're going to continue our review of Netflix's Don't Look Up. Text us 4215 or do. If you want to join in the conversation, if you've watched the movie, we'd love to hear from you. We're going to give you a shout out coming up next right here on Pulse 95. Pulse 95. We are continuing our review of Netflix's Don't Look Up, a sort of a cautionary tale of what would happen if two scientists who tell the world that there is a comet hurtling towards Earth that will be an extin- extinction, extinction, extinction level disaster and nobody believes them, what happens next? And it's basically a commentary on American society and American life. And we really enjoyed it, but I'd say the issues, the glaring issue with that movie, that it was, it didn't need to be two hours and around 20 minutes long at all. I understand that they're trying to chronicle the the emotions of having to wait for that long, as in it's, the days are running, but at the same time they're dragging because you know something really bad is going to be happening really soon. And it's, there's no way you can run away from it, especially with the people who have the power refusing to do anything about it. I get it. It's trying to portray or like in, invoke these emotions, but at the same time, I feel like it would have it would have been useful if they had made use of some editing or cutting here and there that were unnecessary. But all in all, I really enjoyed the amount of cameos we saw, whether it's Ron Perlman. Um, we had Ariana Grande, Vic Sean, Timothy Chalamet. They were just amazing. They were an amazing addition to the movie. Yeah, uh, in terms of the movie being draggy, I think not only because it, the movie is a bit too long, what happens is that s- sooner or later, a lot of the co- comedic uh, touch that the movie had starts to slowly die, die out, and it just becomes too nihilistic. And maybe to some viewers, it, it could kind of scare them because it, it is... When, by the time you finish the movie, it's it, it kind of scares you, honestly. Like the I, the idea behind this movie feels too close to home, and uh, you, you almost get kind of worried. I'm like, this could possibly happen if we ever are in a situation where, you know, uh, we're in a doom in a doomsday scenario like this. Uh, it is uh, it is our we are ourselves leading. We're going to lead ourselves to our own doom because of our greed, our. Uh, political interests and and it just we I, and and the bureaucracy especially like I would say the bureaucracy in this movie is what really hits home that we'll never get anything done we'll never fix the problem and and at the end we're just all gonna just lead lead ourselves to our own doom because of our own absurdities and I feel like it's also making poking fun at the idea of um, you know how in a lot of those movies it's always the Americans who you know first always them who are expected to do something and it's very funny that it was Russia China and I believe it was India India only did something at the very end which made no sense are you telling us that the entire world there weren't any other space agencies or PhD candidates or you know just professors and astronomers and people of science who did not notice it as well that would be strange I mean that's something if they see something hurtling towards earth pretty sure that the entirety of the world at least one person or three or five and the billions and billions of people that are alive would have noticed it. I mean, people of science, people who have these uh, sort of things. So again, a very well done mockumentary. You could call it a mockumentary to an extent, even though it is a fictional movie, but it was a very good mockumentary of American society and just the way that those movies are. But I would have to dock at some points for the ending, because I really like the ending sequence, but the and then I think the po- two post credit scenes were unnecessary in my opinion. I did not need to watch it, even though they, they were funny, they were hilarious, but they were unnecessary. Maybe the last one would be fine, but the first one is a bit unnecessary in my opinion. And the way that it's dragged kind of um, also is the reason why I'm docking points, which is why I would give it a 7 out of 10, because at the end of the day, 
It is still a must watch and is a good kind of movie to watch with your friends, especially over the upcoming New Year's weekend. Uh, for me, uh, Don't Look Up is a brilliant satirical dark comedy film uh, that raises a lot of attention to our personal faults as civilizations, as, as, as human beings, and that um, it, it just... I guess, I guess, I guess we're we're the problem. You know, that's oh, that's, we always have. It's, it's always happen. This movie really hits home that idea, um, and it almost humbles you. It almost makes you feel like you should be less arrogant. You know, towards everything. You so know? your verdict? My verdict is is an, an eight, an eight out of ten. So I I quite enjoyed the message behind it, and there's a lot that you can take from it. Mm -hmm. And I and I love this director and the way he presented this film. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, two po I would say two points are off because it's, it drags off. It becomes too nihilistic, and yeah. And yeah, there is. This is our review of Don't Look Up, an enjoyable movie that. Okay, not for the kids, not for the kids, but for the elder kids maybe because there are some explicit scenes and explicit things happening and lots of violence here and there. But an enjoyable movie all in all. We're going to be taking a quick break and coming up next, let's talk about EA canning a Harry Potter MMO in the early 2000s. Coming up next right here on the Afternoon Cutter. If you liked this episode of Afternoon Karak, drop a like and subscribe. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories.